So I wanted to make this quick video, which is again is going to be more of a, another rant because it's not. I'm not actually going to you know do anything about it. But uh, before you go any further, uh, I know I'm going to title this something about the M2 series of, of Apple products, and I don't own any of them. Don't plan on buying any of them. And at some point in time, I'm sure maybe I'll, I'll you know play around with one or two on a store or something. But for the most part. I think right now I have all the Apple products that I that I need. And for those of you who've seen any of my other Apple videos, there are only two MacBooks that I really would recommend. One is the M1 MacBook Air base model. And then there's the 14-inch MacBook Pro. I would still say M1. I mean, M2 if you find a good price. But right now you can probably find a used M1 and get a very, very similar experience as you would with the M2. So without, again, I don't have any of the M2 products. So don't think I, I you know, you're coming here. Oh, this guy has an M2. Nope, don't have one. So just get that out of the way. That was a disclaimer. And from this point forward, it's really just going to be my thoughts and opinions. So right now, there is the M2 MacBook Air. There's the 13-inch uh, M2 MacBook Pro. The 14 and 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro just got refreshed uh, a couple months ago. Um and then, of course, you still have the Mac Studio, that's an M1 product. Uh, the iMac, that's an M1 product. The iPad Pro got refreshed with M2. The iPad Air still has M1, so forth and so forth, whatever. And, of course, there's an M2 Pro in one of the Mac Minis as well, uh, and a regular M2. And the reason that I even want to talk about it is there was one thing. Uh, I was watching another YouTuber. And I'm pretty sure I remember who it was, but, you know, I'm not here to, to slander anybody's name or, or whatever. But one thing he said is that he recognizes that there is an issue in terms of, well, I wouldn't say issue because he didn't, he didn't say issue. But he recognized that Apple is installing one NAND chip instead of two, like how they used to do for the M1 products. And, of course, depending on the storage configuration you get, then that changes because right now for the 13-inch MacBook Pro... And the M2 MacBook Air, you'll get one 256 gig NAND chip installed right there. And if you want 512 gigs, then boom, now you have two chips. Uh, whereas with the M1 MacBook Air that I currently have, you have two 128 um, NAND chips installed. So what YouTubers have shown, and really Max Tech, they've done a, a, a bunch of testing. But what they've really shown is that you get a substantially slower read-write performance when you only have one NAND chip as opposed to two. And then, of course, Apple is able to give you those two chips if you pay now for a higher tier storage. And even with some of the higher tier storages, they're still showing that there are some differences in terms of number of NAND chips for the M2 series compared to the M1 series. So I might link some videos or if you you know, if I don't, Max Tech, they've done a, a bunch of testing for the 14 and 16 inch products. So they will have everything that you need. But going back to that, that one YouTuber who said that um, even though there's only one chip installed in some of these devices as opposed to two, we really shouldn't have a reason to complain because uh, the speeds that are allowed even from one NAND chip as opposed to two are still substantially faster than things we've seen in the past. Not necessarily the, the predecessors to these devices, but you know, thinking other technologies and, and older products. And to that, I say, no, I'm going to complain and consumers should complain. And again, bringing up Max Tech because they do a ton of research. They showed the, the cost, you know, like per NAND chip and, you know, per gigabyte, you know, however much it, however much more it would have cost Apple to install a second chip as opposed to one big chip. So again, two 128 chips instead of one 256 chip or two 256 chips instead of one 512 chip. Uh, one five, chip. So even even if today's standards or, or today's speeds are way faster than, than the speeds of, you know, three, four, five years ago, that's cool. But there's still, in my opinion, no excuse for Apple to take that shortcut so they could save a few cents and then also encourage people to... Uh, upgrade their storage because, of course, everything started to the board, so you can't install your own uh, storage later on. You can't upgrade your storage later on, which brings me to my second point, uh, which I know it's never going to happen, but uh, 
it would be nice if it did. But again, I know it's not going to happen because what really got me thinking over the past couple of days is I usually have relatively large files on my Windows PC. And it's a Dell Precision 5470. And, and at some point I'll do a video on that because it's a really good machine. I, I really, really like it. But uh, it came with the terabyte. And I thought about upgrading to two terabytes. And again, I thought about it, but I didn't because I said, well, um, I will, I'd will. i rather have external storage that allows me to use it with this device and, of course, use it with other devices as opposed to buying um, a, a second NVMe SSD to replace the one that I have. So to buy the two terabyte one instead of the one terabyte, uh, instead of using the one terabyte one. And um, I ended up, you know, buying um, an external enclosure, which I'll probably do a video on that as well because I'm really, really satisfied. 30 bucks, the Sabrent, whatever the 10 gig one is, uh, toolless 10 gig one, not, not the Thunderbolt 3 one, but it is 30 bucks and 10, gig, 10 gigabit speeds and it works really, really well. Um, but again, all that to say, I, I was satisfied with the fact that I had the option to upgrade the storage in my laptop if I wanted to do so, which again, I didn't, but the option there is is really what's most important. And even though the the Precision 5470 uh, has soldered RAM, which for a lot of people that's, oh man, I can't believe these laptops have soldered RAM. And, and again, I, I used to be one of those people as well. And I keep saying again, even though I haven't really talked about RAM before, but I did used to be one of those people as well. And I would think, well, it'd be nice to buy a machine used and be able to upgrade the RAM yourself and you know whatever cost that would be that would be, would be really nice but fortunately I was able to find this machine with 30, 32 gigs of RAM already installed um, or soldered to the board so so that was enough and with uh, a few other machines that I've had in the past I think the RAM might have been soldered uh, but fortunately the majority of the machines that I have the RAM is not soldered and I'm able to upgrade the RAM if I need to which fortunately I haven't had to um, there have been a few machines that I've chosen to do so to upgrade, a few machines that I've chosen not to. Uh, I, I know my X1 Carbons did not allow me to upgrade the RAM. That RAM was soldered. And at the end of the day, it really didn't bother me that much, you know, not being able to upgrade the RAM. Uh, and unfortunately, the solution at that, you know, in that case, if you need more RAM is to buy a new computer, you know, which you're like, all right, well, do, do what you can. But it, it really depends on what you're doing. Now, when it comes to storage, though, I really think that's that's a different ball game because RAM affects performance, you know. And if you're not really doing high intensity stuff, having eight gigs of RAM or even six, in sixteen, but eight with some of these machines, it's not bad if you're doing like general stuff. But what really becomes problematic is if you are storing large files and your laptop only has two hundred fifty six gigs of storage and with some machines, you'd be like, okay, cool. I'll just go out and upgrade my internal storage and I'll be good to go. And even though I just said that I'd rather have external storage so I could use that same drive with different machines, I would still like the option to upgrade my internal storage if I see fit. So what's happening right now with me is I have my Dell and I have large, large files on there and then I have my external drive that I'm able to transfer files to and from. And frequently, I want to put those files on my MacBook M1 13 inch. But it only has 256 gigs of storage. So I have a terabyte of space on my Dell, 256 gigs of storage on the MacBook. And the external drive I have is also a terabyte. And it's frustrating when I just want to take everything off of the Dell and put it on the MacBook. But I can't because I don't have enough space. So some, some stuff ends up just staying on the external drive, which is fine, but it would be nice if I had the option to put it on the MacBook. And the reason I don't have the option to put it on the MacBook is because the storage is soldered to the motherboard, which seeing the performance improvements with having everything in a nice little tight package, the way that these, these uh, Apple Silicon MacBooks are, I'm okay with it. I really am. But what would be nice, which... I want to say one of the Mac minis, it was an Intel based one, um, allowed for a second drive to be installed. And given how Apple is able to do what they do in terms of engineering, and I know they would never do this, but it wouldn't be uh, imperceivable or imperceivable. 
for them to say, all right, we're going to have our M1 SOC here. Boom. Pay for whatever you have. And you have your soldered NAND man chips, wherever they are. And, hey, here's a PCI Gen 4 uh, slot that you can add extra storage. You know, you, you of course, everything like security and all that, you know, it's all tight, you know, in there. But you put your drive in and then, you know, you boot up Windows and if, uh, <laughs> Windows, you boot up Mac OS. It formats the way that it needs to and encrypts it. If it, has, like it does whatever it does. And at that point, you're able to take your 256 gig MacBook Air and just boom, add more storage because I don't need extra power. I don't need extra RAM, uh, but I don't want to spend an additional two hundred dollars when buying it if I bought it new, which I didn't. But if I bought it new to go from 256 gigs to 512. And just so you know, like right now, and, and you know, let me backtrack right? j- just to give you a clear picture. Going from 256 to 512, you are not getting an additional 512 gigs of storage. You are replacing or adding, let's just say you are adding 256 gigs of storage to your machine that you are are getting built. And that's for $200. Right now, if you go to Best Buy for $150, so $50 less than what Apple charges to, to upgrade your storage, you can get a Samsung Evo Plus or Pro, whatever it is, but it's a it's a two terabyte drive. Now it's a P- PCI Gen three, so we're not talking about Gen four stuff. But you get a Western Digital um, uh, SN eight fifty X right now, one terabyte for a hundred bucks. So and you're getting an additional one terabyte or an additional two terabytes for one hundred or one hundred fifty dollars. And granted, there are there are other drives out there. There are other uh, prices out there. So I'm just using two examples of things that I recently considered purchasing that are substantially cheaper than what Apple is charging and you get way more space. So, I mean, one of two things would would satisfy me, which aren't going to happen, either lower the cost to upgrade storage or, I mean, it's still technically the same thing, you know, just don't offer lower upgrade options, which, you know, you're not going to say, well, you can either start it 256 and then only go up to a terabyte for 200 bucks. But for that, I might say, hey, that's not 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 too bad. Hey, you, you know, the upgrade is 200 bucks for a ter- to, to go from 256 to a terabyte. I might be OK with that. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's good that they offer that, that that middle ground of 512. So the point of me making this video is just to complain. You know, that, that, that that's really all that it is. Apple's not going to do it. Um, it would make me happy if they did, uh, but they would lose a lot of money because everybody would just buy the, the base model and then, yeah, just go get your own drive and install it and be good to go. But when I think about the first comment of, you know, the one guy saying, well, given the drive speeds of today, it doesn't matter that one NAND chip is slower than two and Apple is purposely only putting one in to slow down the performance of the base model to then encourage you to upgrade the storage, you know, you know that, that bothers me. And then it bothers me that you can't add your own storage. But as I mentioned in one of the last videos that I recently uploaded, just think about other options besides Apple. And even with the Mac, you know, they're going to do whatever they want. And, and I will say I am thoroughly impressed and thoroughly satisfied with that machine that I keep pointing to that's over there uh, that you can't see. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm satisfied with the price that I paid, and I think that's the big the, the big kicker is that I paid 700 bucks for it compared to, and that was after tax, after shipping, because I bought it used as opposed to a thousand dollars before tax. Um, so, so yeah, the the price to uh, or the the delight to dollar ratio, which I get from uh, this is tech today, yeah, it's there because of, of of me buying it used. But what would have made it even more enjoyable is if I were able to say, you know what. 256 was cool, but let me pop open this bottom, install a, a PCI Gen 3 or Gen 4 drive for another 100 bucks, and now I got a whole nother terabyte that I can use strictly as storage. I would be fine if Apple said, hey, you can't boot from this. Um, it's strictly a storage. I'd be perfectly fine with that. And I'm saying that now, and I'd probably find a you know a way to complain about it later on. But but yeah, if, 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 if they want to tout security and performance and all this other stuff, hey, Cool. Keep it all locked down on one little chip. But then, yeah, give me the option to install something else. And then, yeah, let me just use that strictly as a storage drive. Um, one, I think the last thing I'll say, hopefully, is that, yes, I, I used to have a 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. 
And I ended up just giving it away to uh, a neighbor of mine because she said her daughter was in the market for one or whatever. And I was like, well, I could go through the hassle of selling it online and getting some of the money back, which, yeah, I, but, you know, hey, let me just try to be a good neighbor. And um, one of the reasons I, I got rid of it is even though I had 512 gigs of storage on it, which is twice what I have in my MacBook Air, it wasn't enough. I needed a terabyte, or I'll say I wanted a terabyte. And at that point, it's like, well, my only options are to do what I've done right now, which is have an external drive or buy another MacBook, which at the time I wasn't going to do. And even right now, I don't think I'm going to do. Um, and yeah, like, and, and it's it's so limiting. I mean, I'll, I'll go back to what I said before. Like, yeah, if you need performance, like, you know that at, at, at the beginning or at the time of purchase. All right. I need this type of processor. I need this much RAM. Storage for a lot of machines is is upgradable or user upgradable. So, you know, it's not as important when you're buying the machine. But when I got this MacBook, it's like, okay, 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah, that's fine. When I bought it, I was like, yeah, 512 gigs of storage. That's fine. Until you realize what's happening. Uh, so when I edit these videos right now, I'm honestly just using iMovie. And you'll take the video file, which is, you know, let's say, uh, I don't know, five gigs. You know, it might be more than that, it might be less. But let's just say five gigs. Then you, you copy it into iMovie. And at that point, then it's now a second, a second file. So I, in the iMovie library, there's another file that's also, I think, about the exact same size. So now that one video file is now 10 gigs, you know, because it's two separate files, but it's now on there twice. And then after you finish editing it, you render it and, and do everything um, to, to, to make the, the final cut. And that, that file, once it's actually all said and done, is another video file. So now that one file is now really three files and it's, it's, it's close to tripled in size, if not more, depending on what you do with the video while, while you're editing it. And yeah, like that, 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 that space gets eaten up really, really fast. And I wasn't thinking it, you know, when I first started. Um, doing this very, very, and this is lightweight video editing, you know? Um, but yeah, it, it, it adds up really fast. So what I end up doing is I'll edit the video. And then once I upload it to YouTube, I have to delete all three files, which not saying I want to keep all of the files, but it's something that I have to do, you know, consistently because with 512 gigs, it just kept getting eaten up really fast. And I'll be honest, I'm even doing some of the editing now on the MacBook Air. And since it's smaller, you know, 256 gigs, yeah, definitely having to constantly delete everything. And if I were able to just, you know, plug in a, a second drive, a second internal drive, that would be absolutely perfect. But again, Apple's never going to do that. I don't excuse them for, um, you know, having fast drive speeds, even if it's one drive as or two NAND chips as opposed to two. No, you should still have two. Um and yeah, it's really unfortunate. So I, right now, will continue recommending the M1 MacBook Air. If you find the M2 on sale, sure. Uh, but they, again, raised the price 200 bucks for the base model. So I you know, wouldn't, wouldn't recommend a $1,200 MacBook Air. Um, and then, you know, the 14-inch MacBook Pro, which M1, M2, at this point, I don't really think it matters as much. If you're able to find something on sale or used, I would always recommend that. Um, but all the other Apple, all the other Apple products, which this the point of this video isn't to talk about the other Apple products, but I'll just say those in terms of MacBook Airs or, or MacBooks, those are the, or Macs, those are the ones that I recommend. Um, and I think that's it. So the point of this video, yeah, just 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 to complain. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Just just to complain. They're 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 fine products. And uh, we're 19 minutes into this. So um, so in summary, the MacBook Air is fine. The MacBook Pros are fine. But I really wish Apple would either A, add a PCIe slot to allow for user upgradable storage, B, lower the price when configuring a MacBook when upgrading the storage, and C, yeah, I wish they would not have... Uh, installed or, or solder just one NAND chip as opposed to two. Yes, it saves them some money, uh, but then it, it, it reduces the performance of your machine. And then, of course, if you choose to upgrade to get that performance back, you're now spending money that you should not have had to spend. So that's it.